Secretary Kincaid, do you want to take roll? Yep. yep. President Davidson. Present. Vice President Massime. As usual, President and accounted for, and pleased to be here. <laughs> Secretary Kincaid. Present. Treasurer Hahn. Present. Director Bergmosser. Present. Director Hector. Yes. Director McGraw. Present. Director Ricketts. Here. Director Setzer. Absent. You do have a quorum. Then I'll call the meeting to order and let's rise for Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> you know, it's always a... I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is the approval of the November 6th board meeting. I have a motion for approval. So done. Second. Second. Any objection? Having no objection, the minutes from the November 6th board meeting are approved. And therefore, I will turn the meeting over to Keith for the first service manager report. report for the uh, data from November. Um, just administration-wise, for the month of November, we completed 44 transfers and 45 leases. Um, we are starting to see an influx in uh, leases uh, for the upcoming season, so December should have a lot more uh, leases on there as well. Uh, approximately 3,500 phone calls were taken in the month of November. We did 544 pest control appointments. We had over a thousand people through the front door. And we completed 250 emergency contact form updates. Um, so we appreciate everybody turning those back in when you're getting those from the uh, annual meeting notices in the mail. So please continue to mail those in or email those or drop them off. Uh, the, the CAMS completed 129 alteration form submissions, issued 15 violation letters, which is way down um, from the months before. Now uh, we completed 144 AVID invoice approvals and drew up 16 new contracts. Just again a note on the annual meetings coming up. Um, we're in the middle of the mailings, so in the next couple of weeks the second mailings for each annual meeting will be sent out to all your individual residents. Uh, this will also include the, uh, the budget that everybody's working on, um, any amendments, things like that that will be in the package, as well as the proxy votes for the meeting. Um, and we'll have a nice letter in there from First Service just kind of uh, outlining some ex expectations for the annual meetings this year as COVID has uh, changed some of the way the meetings will be held. So please keep a lookout for those. Uh, speaking of budgets, we are uh, getting quite a few budgets back, so we appreciate that. So we're, I would say, more than halfway through on those as we continue to uh, meet with boards, um, discuss changes, and uh, make corrections. So. Uh, any questions, please with your cam or give us a call and we'll get those changes corrected uh, as quickly as we can and back to you for final review. Again, we're trying to get those as close to perfect as we can prior to your mailing, just so your association members see the uh, most up-to-date proposed budget. Um, just a bit about insurance. The insurance committee, with, along with the USI agents, are going to be holding a town hall on January 14th, uh, 2021. So we're going to be sending out the invitation um, shortly, which will uh, just give details about that meeting and how it's going to be set up. And then the next insurance committee meeting will be February 4th, and uh, they'll be starting to get into the, uh, the bidding process for the renewal period that happens in April. Um, the Community Promotions Committee, um, they have finalized their preferred vendor to revamp the community website. Um, they'll be bringing the final approval to the Federation Board um, and then as we proceed to draw a new contract and work that forward. So uh, big changes coming there and they are working through that process. 
Um, sections two and four with the landscaping again are ending at March 31st of 2021. We're in the process of updating the uh, contracts and doing a red line revision for the committee and for the board so they'll have um, the, the most up-to-date corrections that the landscape committee came up with. Um, so that'll be done pretty soon and uh, we'll get that over to the committee for final review and then get it over to the contracts committee um, to get that process moving along. The next OLM inspections will be completed December 14th, 15th, and 16th. Palm and oak tree trimmings. The palm trees are still in the second cycle. They are be wrapping up with section three today and they'll be moving into section four next week. So they are slightly behind, but they are uh, bringing in a secondary truck to cut downtime um, out, out of the schedule and hopefully get that wrapped up in the next week or two. Um, we are still um, gathering bids. I mentioned last month for a revision to the procedures on the palm and oak tree trimmings. So we have currently three new bids in based on the new guidelines to trim the palms and the oaks. And we are waiting two final bids. Uh, once we have those, the committee will get to back together um, in January to review those bids, meet with the vendors, and then bring a, bring a proposal to the uh, Federation Board. Mulch. Uh, mulch has wrapped up. There are a couple associations that have a few uh, minor deliveries to be made and corrections to be addressed. And then we're going to be sending out a survey to the presidents and to the POCs regarding the mulch. Um, again, this will just give us a better um, handle on what went well, what went bad, and uh, what we can improve on. Um, and we're going to be bringing additional vendors and bids in for next year's mulch as well, just so everybody knows. Work orders way down for the month of no for uh, the month of November. <coughs> Only seven total. Um, again, average uh, days to close out was five, and this is really because most of the work orders were uh, were related to the, the uh, palm tree trimming. So again, as those guys were handling doing it, they, they came back through. So um, again, only seven total uh, work orders for November. Um, as I mentioned, um, you know, we still have 86 out of 113 associations <coughs> on our AVID uh, accounts payable system. Uh, we're gonna be talking with the presidents um, and the treasurers in the upcoming annual meetings to try to, to get, get more associations on this program. Again, this just helps track and pay invoices in a timely manner and, uh, and can really help um, you know, just getting things done. Again, going back and see what you paid a vendor pretty easily. Everything's online. Uh, it's a pretty smooth system and uh, pretty efficient. So, Again, after hours of emergencies, as we continue through the holidays, please continue to use, utilize that number. Uh, we get calls you know, all the time about you know, various things, even if it's an AC, you know, my AC's out, I need KPW, just give us a call, we'll try to redirect folks um, to the right people, um, or, or if we can help them, we will. So, again, that number is 813-642-8990, and that's all I have. I have a question. Yes, sir. On the uh, work orders and such. Can you speak up, Dan, so they can hear you on the phone? On the work orders and such, um, Half of the requests for work orders were request. What is a request? Somebody's looking for a proposal for a, to take a tree out to install something new. It's a, it's a request for additional work. So basically the work that needed to be done was only maybe three items of, of work that needed to be yeah. done yeah. and four and the other, the rest of it was just tell me what it'll cost to take this out yeah. or what it'll yes. cost to replace. So everybody seems to be doing real well. Thank you. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people I think were away too, so that, that you know. Can Thank you. Lower the volume. Keith, staying in Dan's question, you said the increase in days to close out work orders was mainly due to grow and the palm trading, but only one work order. Uh, was related to growth. Well, the two the two damaged ones were also theirs. So the damaged ones and like they broke a pot and it takes. Them. So half of it was related. Yeah. Half of the orders were related <coughs> to uh, damage by grow or grow prompt trimming the palms. Yeah, and then the requests are a little uh, shouldn't really affect the days as well since it's yeah they, they've got to price stuff out and get it back so. 
KB, other question I have for you is the town hall meeting on January 14th. Yes. Are you going to have more than one town hall meeting? Because uh, we can only have about 40 people <coughs> in the theater at the current. No, one meeting. I think Janice is probably going to touch on that, but it would be uh, televised too. So we're only going to have one meeting in the people that, are we going to have attendance to that meeting? Is it first come, first serve, or? I, don't, I didn't think we would, I don't know how many people, I don't know, I haven't thought about it. We'll get the details out on what the specifics we're going to talk about, and if, if people are interested in it, and if there's an overwhelming interest to be in person, we can ask the uh, USI agents if they would do a morning uh, and afternoon, a morning and afternoon, or back to back, something like that. So okay, because can, for the budget we had four sessions. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if, depending upon the number of people, if we're going to want more than one session. Yeah. Something to think about. I think they'll be open to it and be flexible. So. The only thing before you get up from your chair, I have received a number of comments and if you pass them along to bug guys, I would appreciate it. Uh, a number of residents have approached me and told me how pleased they are with bug guys uh, and how much time they're spending in their homes compared to what Terminex would spend. They said Terminex would come in and spend five minutes where bug guys are actually doing an exceptional job in spending the time and attention needed. Yeah, they'll actually stop and you can ask them questions. They talk for you. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Ginger for the first time. <coughs> holiday schedule or various holiday hours for classes, etc. in uh, the clubhouses. On recreational facilities operations, clubhouse usage for November uh, showed just over 22,000 visits to the clubhouses uh, with an average of 721 visits daily. That's a 16% decrease over prior month, which was interesting. Uh, the South Club uh, posts just uh, under half of the total visits. Fitness usage for November showed the total gym usage over 4,500 for the month of November. We had 18% uh, of those visits were at the South Club gym, so that's still a, a popular place for residents to go work out. Our fitness videos have, since we began, 7,600 total views. That number has declined since people have now come out more and used the, the facilities. In the spa and salon usage for November, we had just shy of 600 services performed for 18,500 in sales and merchandise. That's 33% less than November last year. Probably no shocker there. Uh, food and beverage uh, uh, sales for the month of November, total patrons served uh, 4,871 for total sales of 63,700, which was in sales an 11% increase over prior month, but for patrons a 5% decrease. So those folks coming in are, are spending more. 82% of the patrons are dine in at the South Club. On projects, we have the South Club Pool Expansion Project, which the RFEC uh, will be um, presenting. After my report, uh, the RFTC has approved a motion to submit the plans <coughs> for the pool deck expansion to the Federation Board for consideration. The men's and ladies locker room renovation project at the South Club is underway. Demolition has near completion and the stud replacement phase has begun. The source of leaks which caused the prior water damage has been located primarily at the roof drains in the men's room as well as the flashing failure of some of the exterior walls at the roof line. 
We will be uh, also presenting later a change order uh, due to some of that water damage that will come later in the meeting. On the tennis courts, the refurbishment project on two of those courts is completed. The HVAC replacements were scheduled for November, but due to the tropical storm and they had some um, shipping delays, uh, that project <coughs> has been delayed, except for the card room has been, uh, unit has been replaced. The remaining units are estimated for mid-December delivery date. And finally, on the outdoor pool deck resurfacing, the project began November 16th. It's underway, going uh, according to plan. Drainage installation, expansion joint installation, regrading of the deck surface are completed. Uh, I just walked by this morning and saw the stone pattern installation is all underway. Uh, it's beautiful. It's going to be a um, whole new look when, when the residents get out there. We're hoping it'll be uh, finished by mid-December if it stops raining. Um, on special event information, the second concert for a cause was held Yesterday, we had two full shows. Uh, the feedback, according to Matthew, has been very positive and will continue to offer this kind of programming in the future. However, due to recent increases in cases of COVID uh, in the state, nationwide for that matter, no new planned activities or special events have been planned at this time. We do have a new marketing campaign that will be coming out regarding mask wearing, social distancing, and community rules and contact conduct um, that will be distributed soon as reminders for the new residents coming back into the community of uh, what our policies and procedures here are in this point. In tram services, the November operations, we uh, drove over 2,400 miles, actually saw a decrease in ridership of about 26% over prior month. In gate security, uh, November phone calls, 4% increase, and in, uh, no shocker here, the day before Thanksgiving, our highest day, we had 579 calls that day, a 36% increase over the prior month. And just a couple of notables, several staff members and residents brought to security's attention various close calls involving speeding golf carts and cars with drivers not paying attention to pedestrians while using the walkways um, back and forth between the portico, the north clubhouse, et cetera. All drivers are asked to please remember we do have a lot of walkers out there. Please <coughs> abide by the posted speed limits in the area for safety of uh, the pedestrians and yourselves. Um, and finally, during the month of November, we had approximately 162 golf cart entries per day at the golf cart gate, a total of 4,868 golf swipes. The staff of Vesta would like to wish all our residents a healthy and blessed holiday season and stay safe out there. And I'm not letting you leave. Okay. <laughs> uh, I noticed on the revenue for food and beverage mm -hmm. that although 18% uh, of the patrons served with <coughs> for portico pickup, yet it amounted to 32% of the revenue. Mm -hmm which I would assume reflects the bar where the tabs would be lower, or what would cause such a... You know, it's, it, it, it could be that uh, it's one person picking up, but they're buying for two. It could or be that. Wouldn't they be... I don't know that somebody drive... I, I believe when you guys count them, it's somebody driving up, right, uh, Andrew, and picking up? but he could have ordered for two people in the household. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <coughs> Jack, it was up last month, too. Yeah. It's not, it's it's not unusual. It's been climbing. No, and it's not, it's not that. It's just that 18% of the patrons mount for 32%, and mm -hmm. it could very well be. I would only ask that if COVID ends anytime soon, because it seems to be popular with the revenue we get, mm -hmm. that we possibly consider retaining the portico pickup uh, for the community on an ongoing basis until we see a major decrease in it because then we haven't counted for twenty thousand dollars in revenue during the month uh, yeah, and I wouldn't want to see once COVID went away we said okay we're going to get away of portico pickup because a lot of residents do use it 
Well, we could only be so lucky that COVID would be going away soon. I don't think it is, but uh, we won't be ending that program anytime soon. And we could always take that. And interesting, the, uh, the pool deck sales, 2% uh, of revenue, that was all of November, but only $1,200 out there. So people did use it, just wasn't overwhelmingly. It's not some, where they get dinner just a uh, staying on food and beverage. Uh, for total sales, we had sixty-three thousand uh, seven hundred and fifty-eight. Is it possible to give us what the actual was for November for last year, so that we can see the decrease that's been occurring? Yeah, we can get that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Over prior. Over prior yeah. year. Right. Good. Good. Okay. Thanks. I'll be back. Yes, you will. Yeah. <laughs> we have you working very hard today, Jim Jones. Uh, we'll do committee reports. Uh, Dave, do you have any update on anything? Uh, nothing to report other than I'll just have to apply to what Keith said that we're getting ready for red lines to go over the contract committee, and hopefully that'll happen over the next week or so. Okay. Noreen, do you have anything? Dan, do you have anything? Speak up. The Contracts Committee uh, has been in contact with First Service uh, in regards to the Landscaping Committee or the Landscaping Committee and the Landscape Contract Renewal and we are working together to bring that to fruition as quickly as possible. Okay, and would you be sure as Keith is working on new palm and tree contract the new we'll be looking method at that, that you will be involved in it? Yes, sir. Right. Doug, anything? Nothing that has already been mentioned. We can just adjust it on the on the Rick. Okay. Yes, uh, Keith was kind enough to bring up, us up to date on the uh, website business. The other thing I think is important to us, which we're very enthusiastic about it, is that Monday, will be, as far as I know, the first official meeting between all the real estate companies in Sun City Center, along with the Community Promotion Committee, looking forward to enhance upon the good relationship we've had over the years, and hopefully we can help them, and it will be mutually beneficial. So Monday is our first meeting. Every one of the companies represented in Sun City were enthusiastic about it and are happy issued uh, a return to me that they will be in attendance Monday. Very good. I have one other item. The Communications Committee uh, has brought forward uh, a uh, proposal to, buy, to use a new company to develop websites for um, the community and uh, I will be working with them for their contract for the new vendor. Candace, do you have anything? Nope. Keith mentioned it. The uh, town hall, that's the next insurance activity, and you'll be getting more information on that. Okay. Uh, Alan, I know that you asked to not do a treasurer's report this month because the third quarter will be ending shortly, and you will be providing that in January, correct? At the next, correct. At the next meeting, I'll have the, at the end of the third quarter results, correct. That takes it to the president's report. I really have nothing to report except I appreciate as we end 2020 all the work that uh, the individual directors on the board have done and the time that they have put into uh, the different phases that we have gone through. We have approved uh, a number of contracts. Some of the biggest contracts that we've approved are the VESTA contract for managing the land trust and the first service contract for managing the association properties for individuals in the community who worked on those. I would like to extend my appreciation for the time and effort, thoughts and ideas they put into those, uh, except for the uh, section 2 and Section 4 contracts which we're doing, we basically have completed all contracts that are expiring as of March 31st. Uh, so we basically only have one uh, major contract coming up 
that will be handled within the first three months of this year. I would like to extend the board's best wishes to all of the residents within Kings Point for a safe and happy holiday. Uh, we have been very fortunate in keeping the number of COVID down behind the gates within Kings Point, and I appreciate the effort of all the residents. Uh, probably uh, the one person I would like to call out for our the board's appreciation is Matt uh, from Vesta, who fields. 99% of all the calls that we get regarding closures and wearing of face masks and different activities. I know he gets an exceedingly high number of emails every day, meets with residents, and Matt, I would like to extend the board's appreciation to you for that load that you carry and the manner in which you do it. So thank you very much, Matt. I, we, the board appreciates the efforts that you put into it. And outside of that, I just wish you all a very happy holiday. Uh, stay safe. Uh, we need you all. Uh, so let's continue the good efforts that we have done. Jack, do you want to speak on the survey monkey that that's today's uh, last day to push out? Uh, just a reminder that the uh, survey monkey that was sent out through first service by the Federation Board is due today. I can tell you that Alan uh, has been gathering some information and hopefully can respond. And if we need to extend the deadline for a day or two, we will once the responses are, uh, Alan's responses and uh, Noreen's responses are done. Therefore, I'll open the call, the meeting up for open forum. If any president would like to speak. I'd love who's ever clock that is that's chiming. Uh, if you star six to unmute your phone if you're muted. Hearing no uh, request to speak during open forum, uh, we will go to unfinished business. I will tell you that the RFEC has been working extensively for well over a year, possibly two, uh, in the South Club Pool Project. Uh, the board appreciates their efforts in what they have done. I do know that once that project is approved, and Ginger, you can correct me if I'm wrong, there will be large placards placed in the North Clubhouse and the South Clubhouse. And this clubhouse. And the 2020 building showing what that project will entail uh, entirely with a uh, or a color board. A, a color board, a placard. Uh, with the detail of showing the different changes that will be made to that South Club pool. But I do want to thank the RFEC and specifically the committee that worked on this. Uh, it had to be a labor of love for as many hours as you put into it, so I appreciate it. And with that, Roger, are you going to do the presentation on it? Yes, sir. It's all yours. Good morning, everyone. Morning. The topic of overcrowding at the South Club Pool Deck has been a topic of discussion within King's Point since 2011. On January 29th, 2020, at the request of the RBC with the Federation Board approval, Vesta Property Services executed the contract with Phil Graham, landscape architect, for professional services in the amount of 
to develop a conceptual design and budget forecast for the purpose of reaching, I'm sorry, researching a pool deck expansion project. Over the past 10 months, the Ad Hoc Committee, <coughs> VESTA, and the RFEC have met numerous times to review, critique, and determine a reasonable plan to enhance the amenity for the usage by the Kings Point community. Bill Graham has designed a site plan which is attached to this document, which depicts the overall layout of the pool deck expansion project and created a preliminary budget proposal which is attached to achieve the plan. This plan will increase the overall deck space by approximately 7,000 square feet and add an additional 122 seats, which is an increase of 39% capacity. It will also provide for an established food and beverage walk-up service outlet for the enjoyment of light food and beverages during pool events. Finally, a dedicated entertainment area is planned for the highly desirable music programs at the special events scheduled at the South Club Pool. <clears throat> the proposed scope of work consists of removal and replacement of select landscape beds with an addition of compatible hard surface to those areas, installation of new concrete sidewalks and relocation of the pool perimeter fencing, installation of new and remapping of existing drainage and water lines for irrigation, installation of new landscaping to create a tropical resort aesthetic, replacement of landscape accent lighting, relocation of four existing pool deck light poles plus installation of one new pole. The upgrading of LED lighting on all light poles pending light study requirements. Replacement of all existing outdoor pool furniture scheduled for 2021 per the reserve study. Installation of additional seating and the installation of additional shade structures. Increased electrical panel capacity for the food and beverage operations for poolside services, removal of obsolete metal support poles from prior year's shade structure, development of dedicated entertainment area with retractable awning with sound system to be determined, the installation of dedicated smoking area and RFID pool gates, and finally replacement of for an installation of two new air circulation fans. Our recommendation from the RPC, we offer this proposal and recommend that the Federation Board of Directors accept the proposal, conceptual site plan and budget as approved by the firm of Bill Graham and as reviewed by the RFPC. Professional services will be necessary, such as architectural services, permitting, site clearing, deck light study, landscaping, and construction services, and are included in the anticipated total project budget of $580,520. In addition, a 15% contingency, which is $87,078, has been added to the funding request for potential unforeseen costs. Therefore, the RFPC's request is for approval of a $667,598 amount to fulfill the proposed scope of renovations with project commencement in first quarter 2021. The source of these funds will be the capital reserve account, which is available to be used at board discretion. We feel this is a worthwhile investment back into this popular community amenity. It will be modernized and aesthetically appealing while maximizing the function, functionality of the non-utilized cabana space and offering more seating for residents who, are, who use the facilities at the South Club, thereby increasing the enjoyment of all Kings Point residents and their guests. Any questions? Any discussion? Dan? What, what is the plan to do with all the um, old furniture? Are you going to take some of that to the North Club and replace? I'll let Ginger yeah. answer that or Matt. Yeah. We haven't discussed it yet. We'll have to assess if they're usable. A lot of it's real old. Ginger, but... you're going to have to come up front yeah. so they can hear you.
we'll, we'll have to evaluate the, the quality and if some of the older pieces are available, we can use those okay. up here. You know, we typically repurpose of 25% of each pool deck every year, so if we can use it, we will. Great. The newer pieces. Okay. And you're going to repurpose a number of the plants that are potentially usable to other places in the uh, community? Yes, and also on the pavers, any any pavers that we pull up, we will save so that we can have replacements for the paver deck that's out there. So we, we'll try to be, and uh, Victoria understands that, as efficient uh, as we can. We will Excuse visit. me, Jake. <laughs> Red, you want to Red! Red! Red. So much is going on. I know you have to leave. You're voting to approve this? Yes. Okay. I just I'll be to back it. too if you need anything else coming up. All right. We do. I was I'm just sorry, uh, saying that as much as possible where we can repurpose, um, utilize something, we will. You know, that's that's our goal. Okay. I know bathrooms. I was just looking through everything. Um, they're going to all be revamped. I mean, they're in the same place. The same outdoor pool, outdoor bathroom. pool bathrooms, and so they're they're not part of this plan. They have been recently in the last what year or so they were repainted, but they're not part of the renovation. Was it? Well, they're not. We didn't put that in there. This remember started as an expansion and it grew, but we'll see if we can dress them up a little bit with our fun. Yeah, I mean, to do something so nice and then and those bathrooms are so. Basic is good. Yeah. Basic. <laughs> they're, they're outdoor pool bathrooms, right? We'll see what we can do, but it's not part of the plan. Dave, okay. do you have anything? Uh, no, but the bathrooms, maybe we can use some of the contingency funds if we yep. get to that point. Yep, absolutely. I, yeah, I would just stay. say that uh, <clears throat> we've been privy to seeing the RFAC do their work in numerous, more than numerous meetings looking at all the options and I think that they've done a really good job overall in presenting this plan and that it will work extremely well for the community. I'm, I'm excited about it. Alan, do you have any comments, questions? Um, I have no questions. Again, maybe just another comment. Just, uh, comments. Um, again, this has been going on for almost almost 10 years. I know and task boards have looked at it and decided, well, too much money. We just don't want to do anything. It's, it, it's needed. And, and this, this RFEC and, and, and Ginger and her uh, group at, at VESTA uh, have done an admirable job here. And this is, yeah, I'm really excited. This, is, this looks like good stuff and good work. And, and it sounds like a lot of money, but if you actually divide it up by households, it comes to about $110, $115 per household. Doug, do you have any? No comments. Dan. Yes, sir. Uh, as this is projected to come out of the capital reserve account, so residents will not incur any cost for this ballpark. What do we currently have in the capital reserve funds? Is that one point seven million dollars? I think it's one point seven. Yes. So we have one point seven million dollars sitting in our capital reserve. Or this is an improvement for the entire community. So we're utilizing uh, less than $700,000 of that money that's been sitting there. There's no way does it's it. not going to impact the availability of still having a million dollars in that fund to be able to do any capital improvements that within correct. the community. Am I correct? That too? is correct. At what rate does that get replenished? You know, with the goes well, into it a year or the, a month. There are a certain amount of dollars out of the budget that go into that reserve fund on an annual basis, uh, and it fluctuates based on what the uh, uh, survey says we need to do in terms of replacing property, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's another component just for capital expense. I don't know right off the top of my head what those dollars are. Okay. Um, but it's a part of uh, the monthly collection. But I don't think, Dan, we have put any money into capital expense in the budget capital reserves. No, no. That came with the uh, refinance. Uh, and, and the uh, 
yeah. additional Security monies that were put in there over the years. So, yes. But it's not it's a part of a budgeted dollar figure to put money in the capital reserve. No. It, the money is used for replacing, the money that's in the budget is for replacing items that need to be replaced like roofs and It's in repair and replacement reserves. Yes. But not in that's the a separate reserve. part of the fund. It's not a capital replacement. And, and if I may, um, to answer your question, it doesn't get renewed with the exception of any surplus to performance year over year of what was budgeted versus what actual performance Didn't you? I have a feeling people on the phone are having a hard time okay. hearing you. To answer Noreen's question about replenishment, it's really the only thing you could call replenishment is any improvement over performance to plan. Let's just say uh, we do better than we expected to do by $100,000. That goes into that that it goes uh, back. that fund. Okay. Thank you. It's your money. It's still in the bank account. Okay. Thank but, you. but the capital. There are two parts to the capital <coughs> fund. The capital improvements for new projects, new buildings such as this pool, and the other part is the replacement of items that have to be done on an annual basis. Let me rephrase what you're saying. There two parts of the land trust dollars. There's two reserves. There is a capital improvement reserve, and there is a repair and replacement reserve. They are totally separate reserves. The repair and replacement reserve increases or decreases over a year depending upon what items within the community need repair and replacement? That is the that is the variable within the budget on a year-to-year -year basis. It was one of the reasons that the land trust budget increased by four dollars and eighty some cents was for the repair and replacement uh, reserves and the projects which the Federation Board had approved to be done. Yes, that's what I was trying to clarify. I didn't want people to think that it's just out there and we're doing it willy-nilly. No, we're not out there doing it willy-nilly. Basically, the capital reserve has been sitting there. It is a part of the refinancing of the loan where a little over a million dollars was placed into it. We're paying 4.42% interest on that million dollars, and we have been reaping no benefit of it. This is a major change, in my opinion, to the community of upgrading the community. The South Club is a very focal point within the community, and it hasn't been touched in about 20 years since the club was originally done. It is a high-use amenity, and basically, as the community ages, we have to make sure, as with anything else, that we improve the amenity uh, so people will want to buy in here, and that is one of the things I believe that the expansion allowed to do is to also upgrade the pool deck area to allow for additional seating. I think Roger mentioned a snack bar, putting in and upgrading the entertainment area, so more into a stage with a retractable awning, uh, taking and segmenting a separate area away from the pool for smoking that can be accessed via a gate uh, and it is not part or on the pool deck any longer. Uh, these are the things which Kings Point and a community as large as ours needs to be looking at in expenditures. And the good part is that we can do this because previous boards had the foresight to establish a capital reserve fund which would allow us the money and allow future boards the money to be able to do capital improvements. And to uh, Roger and Peggy, both of the RFEC, and to the RFEC, I want to express my appreciation for the time and effort and the work you put into it. 
I do not uh, want it to go unrecognized that Victoria, who works at Vesta <coughs> and is highly involved in many projects that are done, uh, working with the architectural firm, uh, getting drawings and stuff for the RFEC, that Victoria, I appreciate the effort that you put into this project. Uh, again, it had to be a labor of love uh, for all the work and time and effort you put in in listening to the RFEC, uh, wanting changes on this and wanting changes on that, and you going back and handling. So, Victoria, I appreciate the effort you put into it along with the RFEC and the committee. We only have Thank eight you. revisions. Not much. <laughs> eight revisions that we know of. Uh, Seeing there is no other discussion, I will call for approval to spend the $580,520 for this project with an additional $87,078 of contingency fund for any unforeseen issues that may arise for a total of $667,000. $598, of which the entire amount will be withdrawn from the capital improvement reserves for this project. Any objection? Hearing no objection, the motion and recommendation from the RFEC is approved. And I know that the RFEC is very happy. And I'm quite sure once the residents see what this project will look like with the poster boards that will be going up, along with the design element key and the design considerations. Ginger, do you know when that will be available within the North Clubhouse, the South Clubhouse, the 2020 building? Probably within a week. So sometime next, by the end of next week? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I would just like to make one other comment. You gotta uh, speak up, Dan. Once the project gets started, the board will have oversight on each and every contract that is made for this project. Um, and we will, have, we will approve the specifics of the individual contract. Yes, as the residents are unaware but I know the RFEC is, uh, and the board is aware that there were price quotes given uh, for high scale, low scale, medium scale for the different work. So the pricing for this, and as we get into it, the budgeted items as we go along will be approved by the board along with the uh, contractor's contract. Um, I'd like to point out one thing. On the schedule that's attached that shows the itemization of the dollars, the contingency is at 10% as opposed to 15%. So that schedule should be adjusted. Okay. 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 I believe that was a final RFEC change uh, of their recommendation for the board is to take it from 10 to 15%. Right. So. Congratulations to all involved. We appreciate it. And I am sure once the community sees this, they will be very pleased with the design and what has come up on it. Uh, the first item on new business is the Engage the Audit Company, company of Walters and Associates. Was that a carryover from Last meeting? Um, yes and no. Um, we the, the audit was approved, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We the board engaged or requested to engage Walters and Associates for the next two years. And you've gone through all the The audit was approved. Uh, Walters and Associates did great work. Um, the board had asked Walters and Associates if they would consider 
an additional two years of audit work on our behalf. Uh, and they sent us an engagement letter for uh, President Davidson's signature. So I'm assuming that's what this item is. That the board needs to approve the engagement, the engagement of them from of the land trust perspective. This is the audit of the land trust. Folks. Yes, the annual audit of the land trust. The board has to approve um, the use of these. This company, they uh, the cost for next year would be fifteen thousand, and the cost for the following year would be fifteen thousand five hundred. And this is solely for the land trust. Solely for the land trust. Solely for the annual audit of the. Uh, uh, Vessels operating for the year. Land trust operating for the year. Yes. So Vestas operating budget has to get reviewed every year of their actual expenses, and that's what this is for. Okay, but it's on not on behalf of the land trust. It's, it's not, not. It is not the Vesta budget. It is the land trust, trust budget. It's the land trust budget of operations. Yeah. Can I have a motion? to engage Walters and Associates for an additional two years? I will move. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, just, we. this is a new accounting firm that we brought in. Can you, the, the two of you, Alan and Dan, could you, how was their performance during the first year? I'd just like to have that put out in the open. If they had not performed well, I would not have recommended them for a second year. Uh, I feel that they did an outstanding amount of work. Uh, we requested this year that they uh, take a special look at the vendors and the vendor distributions, as well as cash and cash management. Uh, they also, in reviewing property, found a weakness in the uh, systems and recommended uh, the uh, a change that would fix that, which was uh, a different um, kind of software that's used exclusively for property. Uh, Vesta has taken that recommendation. Uh, they were considerably less expensive than the prior auditors and, in my opinion, did superior work. And I think, and I don't know if you were here, Dave, because of your surgery when Dan did the second quarter financials, that he had made changes in those financials in the accounting of certain assets. assets, which were the direct result of the new audit firm that reviewed the financials and suggested it be done that way. So it seems they did a very extensive uh, review of the land trust financials to make sure they were appropriate. Yeah, I'd like to also say they, they did a good job. Um, there, there's uh, two philosophies on audit companies. One is that you keep an audit company uh, year after year. They're familiar with the, 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 the job. Each year they can look a little deeper and find some things, and that's a good thing to kind of keep them over. There's another school of thought saying it should be you should get a new one every five years because after so many years, it's good to have just new eyes and look at everything fresh. Uh, our, our previous audit company was here, I think, for about 12 years. They, they, they've been here since the beginning of the land trust. Uh, so they've been doing it for quite a, quite a number of times. This company did a good job. They came in, they looked at a lot of new things, and, and uh, yeah, the, the report was good. I think they did a great job. This is a good company. Good. Any other discussion? I'll call the vote. Any objection to retaining Walters and Associates CPAs for an additional two years to audit the land trust financials? Hearing no objection, motion has carried. Now I'll turn the meeting back over to Ginger as the there are three land trust projects that uh, Best is looking for money for always more money. It's the season, I guess. Um, Dave, to answer your question about prior year food and beverage sales, mm -hmm. almost exactly 50.1 percent more. So it was. Uh, I think at 63, it was 125. I think in the. Prior year. 
Thank you. Yeah. Want me to start with erosion? That's the first okay. one on the bill. Yep. All right. Um, <coughs> back in August, uh, the end of August, actually, uh, very last day of August, Keith uh, had advised Jack of some concerns he had. They brought it to Vesta to investigate an area of erosion on the southeast corner of the 1904 building. Due to the amount of erosion <coughs> from underneath the building, the structure had a noted also experienced noticeable structural cracking and also in the foundation. We obtained bids to repair the embankment of the pond wall and presented <coughs> them to the board. This proposal offers to install also concrete supports under the foundation at the southeast corner as well as the installation of a retaining wall along the adjoining lake embankment. It's recommended to initiate this project as soon as possible during the drier season to avoid further washout and prevent further damages. This is a non-budgeted repair project and will require board approval for funding in order to reinforce the eroded area and prevent further structural damage to the building. Vesta obtained three <coughs> bids, Hecker Construction, Solid Foundation, and Land and Sea Masters. We are recommending the, uh, not the least expensive bid, but the one from Solid Foundations because they will not only do a longer lineal foot retaining wall, but they will also add foundation supports underneath the structure. The scope of work includes permitting and engineering installation of the 110 lineal feet of pressure-treated wood retaining wall, retaining wall posts, uh, push piers, 27 yards of backfill soil, uh, installation of some higher grade gutter pipe extensions, and some installation and site prep of sod and irrigation after all this is done. Vesta recommends that the Federation Board consider the proposal from solid foundations with an additional amount for sod installation for a total of $39,200 to fulfill the proposed scope of work for repairs at the 1904 building. I would just mention that the 1904 building for clarity for people listening is the building where First Services resides. Correct. Um, I have a motion to approve the recommendation. So moved. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? I will tell you that for those of us who have met with First Service in their conference room, <coughs> the, the conference room wall, which is where the corner of the building is, is starting to occur cracks in that conference room wall. Is this something that needs to be addressed uh, or we're going to end up spending a lot more money? Or turn it into a patio. Or turn it into a patio. <laughs> uh, we want to make sure that that building lasts for another 20 or 30 years before uh, its useful life has been diminished. Uh, I would recommend to the board approval of it. Uh, I know First Service would feel a lot safer without having that building possibly collapse in the back corner. If there is no other discussion, I will call the question. Any objection? Having no objection, the motion is carried. Ginger, you can proceed ahead with the work of uh, not to exceed $39,200. Thank you. All right, let's talk about moisture. <laughs> uh, Vesta has had concerns about the ceramic tiles releasing from the bonding materials on the concrete subfloor in the clubhouse for some time. In addition, the subfloor in the 20, 20 Center has had moisture collection beneath the carpet, and these concerns were shared with the Federation Board. We have done numerous tests with various companies. We had uh, calcium chloride tests, relative humidity tests. Your packet shows all of those numbers and explains what they are. I won't read all of that information. But the, the, the problem is there, um, and we have to determine the source of the moisture, location, and possible resolutions or remedies going forward for how we 
uh, not only do replacement of carpet and tile, but perhaps have to mitigate uh, where the moisture is coming from. We did have three ben uh, vendors. I think you tried a couple others. Uh, we had one decline to bid. The project was just too big and complex for them. Uh, Suncoast Inspection did provide a bid of 5,500 inspections for all the facilities. And we also contacted expert water removal. The engineer has just made it to the site, I believe, Tuesday. Uh, so we have not received his bid with an estimated uh, project scope or cost. After evaluating these test results and due to the continued concerns of moisture levels in all three facilities as well as the floating tile in the main clubhouse, but in absence of the third bid yet, Vesta recommends the board approve a not to exceed amount of $7,500 to contract a vendor to further investigate the source of the ongoing moisture concerns and provide a written report of findings which will provide us with possible remedies and solutions going forward. Should the bid from expert water removal be a better value, we will award them the job. If not, we will accept the proposal from Suncoast Inspections for $5,500 for the following elements in their proposed scope, which is an inspection, a written report of the findings, and remedies and solutions to address it. We feel this investment provides additional specialized knowledge, which VESTA does not have, with which we will be better equipped to plan for the future and understand the full scope of the preliminary work that will be required to repair and replace the clubhouse flooring. So, I would move that the board approve a not to exceed amount of $7,500 to hire a moisture detention detection expert uh, to determine where the moisture within the 2020 North Club and South Club is coming from and what their proposed resolution would be. Not South Club. And I have a... Not South Club, right? Just North and 2020. It's all three. It's all three. So we are built on a swamp. Yeah, exactly. Where's South Club? Is that the middle house? We don't we have, have their North readings 20. on the executive summary, but it's something that we had said we, we should do since we're going to be spending a lot of money doing renovations in the coming fiscal year. But um, the proposal's so, for all three. But the proposal is for all right. three. And in the historical timeline, you can see where Bass did um, so as well as yeah. And the recommendation on the first line says, uh, can I have levels a, before we get into system. discussion, can I have a second on the motion? Uh, second. Thank you. Now, Dan, go ahead, but you got to speak up. The recommendation does mention uh, on the first line of the recommendation that it looks at the moisture levels in all three facilities. Yeah. Yes. So the $7,500 covers all of the buildings that we feel we have a problem with. And again, I'd just like to mention that all of these buildings, are, our entire complex is built on a swap. So uh, after 40 years or so, this is not something that should not have been unanticipated. A swamp. Swamp. Swamp land. Swamp land. Nature preserve. So, <laughs> this is a reasonable, a reasonable expectation, and I think it's a reasonable cost to figure out where, where the water is coming from. We've been looking at that for almost a year now in different options. Repaired some piecemeal, and it, some places it's worked, most places it has not. But until we determine where the moisture is coming from, which is a moisture detection expert, uh, we're just going to be. Uh, putting a band-aid on an issue and not resolving the issue. Exactly. And to me, the land trust would be uh, well advised to spend the money to have this done for the facilities which it owns. Any objection to providing a not to exceed uh, cost of $7,500? Quite obviously, we would look at the contract from uh, and the final RFP quote uh, prior to any work proceeding. 
Any objection to the motion? No. no. Motion is passed, and Ginger, you can now have Victoria <laughs> proceed with this one. Uh, we are loading up Victoria today, I have a feeling. All right, continuing on with the moisture theme. Uh, in mid-November, as the South Club a restroom renovation project was underway, regrettably, the contractor advised best of significant areas of water damage that had been discovered in both men's and women's restrooms. This is part of why we need some of that um, work done to identify exactly where these things are coming from. The sources of water, uh, as as defined by what the con contractor could see, were improper installation of shower pan liners, insufficient moisture barrier up the sauna walls. Uh, they had some leaking of piping at the connection to the roof drain. Uh, there was a gap in the concrete subfloor, so there's various areas uh, where water uh, over the 20 years of that clubhouse has intruded according to the contractor. I mean, he's not a water intrusive specialist. He was just noting that these areas uh, were there. His job is then to repair the water damage. And, and in the con reconstruction of these restrooms, um, he noted that his bid was for relamination of the partition walls between um, the uh, toilet fixtures, however, relamination was no longer an option because the internal uh, parts of the partitions were swollen and damaged from water. So they cannot be repurposed. Also, there was extensive water damage that was needed. All of this was undiscoverable until they started ripping the walls out and once they saw what was behind them. So um, we needed additional fund to replace some studs and additional drywall in the partitions. So he has requested a change order for new partitions, additional materials, including studs, green board, and waterproofing, and the labor, which was discounted, for a total of $28,172, excuse me, 28 cents. Best of Property Services offers his change order to the Federation Board for consideration. Unforeseen water damage discovered during the demolition is an unfortunate consequence However, it's a situation that needs to be rectified and appropriate replacement materials installed to prevent further damage going forward. VESTA recommends the Federation Board consider and accept the change order for $28,172.28 as submitted by AB Construction so that they may continue on with the restroom renovation project as planned. I have a question. Can I have a motion before you ask the question? So moved. Move what? We approve the recommendation of Best Property Services offering a uh, change order. Of $28,172.28. $28, Second? Second. Discussion, Noreen? Yes, on here I notice it says roof flashing failure causing rainwater to enter and travel down black exterior walls under drywall and tile that travel throughout affected areas. Is this um, going to be um, redone, fixed, so that this cannot happen again? Yes, currently um, we are, uh, what do you want to call it? Painting along there, repairing where the, the flashing is separated. We're tarring the roof area. Where the leakage was as a band-aid before we get the total roof replacement on there, which is in the budget for April 1st. So we're putting on a band-aid just yeah. along the flashing wall where the, the so seepage the is. So the, the roof is being re fully replaced next year. And an extra budget. And we're so is this, this is pretty much guaranteed that that will stop the problem from happening. It's one of the sources. I mean, there's, well, I there's that. other sources. But from, and, that, from that location. And the specialist that we, the prior bid was to get the specialist out there to identify exactly. Water runs. I mean, you know, we can have a contractor up there say, well, this is where we think it's going in, but we've got to get more information. I know your concern is about making sure the roof is in there. We don't want to spend all of this money on right. a bathroom renovation and then have and it be damaged. And then have damage we don't where, want that either. Yeah, because, I mean, you're going to put a new roof right. in the bathrooms. So there's now a, you have leakage, and now you have to replace the roof skin. So there's a couple of parts of the puzzle. We have to make sure we have this contractor replace the damage. 
we have to get this water guy to tell us where it's running. We have to make sure we, we repair where the obvious parts are. And then we're getting right on top of getting the bids for the roof replacement. It will take a while to get those in. It's not budgeted till April 1st, but we're going to hit the ground running with that if the board approves that. It's in the next year's budget, but we're hoping all that comes together so we can prevent further damage and um, take care of what you know, needs to be taken care of. Okay, I think I heard you say that you're going to have Suncoast from the prior one we just approved looking at this also, so to see if there's any Unless additional Unless the other moisture. company comes back with a, okay. a, a better bid. Yes, they're also going to be looking at it. That all correct, Victoria? Did I? <coughs> yes, ma'am. And we do have two roof bids currently. I'm just pending a third, so we're okay. actively working on getting that taken care of. For yeah, us. that's a that's a different project, but it's all part of the same puzzle. Correct. Let Let me make clarify. The moisture guy is going to decide where the moisture is coming from before this guy starts closing up walls again. That's a different moisture guy. We are hoping that he can look at it while the walls are open. But we need to schedule that with him. Now that the water specialist has, uh, well, if you get your bid back, if this water expert guy delays much, we're probably just going to have to go with Suncoast. Correct. Right? Yes. <coughs> that would be ideal, to your point, Rick, is to get him up there looking before walls are closed in. Right. Not only would it be ideal, I think it would be proper. Yeah. No sense in, in having him new Absolutely. walls and everything put in. And then he's determined that something's coming in right. from behind them. I think the walls are still wet. They're still in a drying phase, aren't they? They are. We're not near the point of closing it up, so we do have some time to get him in there prior to that stage. Good. Have we looked at any liability from the prior roofer not to put into flashing on correctly? Have we talked to them it's about that? It's due to age. 20 years ago? It's, well, the roof isn't 20 years old. She's, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, the original it roof. And it's, it's the original. And it's been re but it ha it's been repaired between it's when it was put on and now? Or is that the original flashing? Uh, the barrel tiles and things. Oh, uh, the, yeah. That's, it's just age. It's okay, age. So there's it's, no responsibility. No. Yeah, it's original. 20-year-old okay. Any other discussion? No call the motion. <clears throat> Any objection? Seeing none. Hearing none, we'll approve the 28,172.28. And Ginger, before you leave, uh, the board would like in the future when we do a project of this size, because if I remember correctly, the entire project is worth like 190,000 some odd dollars, that in the future when you bring to the board uh, work for the land trust, that you include a contingency in such as we did for the pool. So if we do run into things, we don't have to go back and get uh, board approval for the land trust to spend the money because it's already been approved. More than that. Yeah, hindsight is, is 2020, mm -hmm. and I find no fault that we hadn't done it in the past uh, but I think going forward, having contingencies is a good idea, Absolutely. and it will help save a lot of time and effort in the future. I'm going to run back to my chair before you all hit me if I ask for more money. So. <laughs> Gingy, you oh, asked for a lot of it. money today. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. Uh, with that, uh, I will open up the call for good and welfare. Again, if you are muted, if you hit star six, you unmute. Hearing no comments for good and welfare, I will accept a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'd like to point out quickly, though, that there will be no December meeting. Yes, as a reminder, there is no December membership meeting as it was canceled uh, with membership approval, uh, originally scheduled for December 18th. So we will see you, and just as a reminder, and this is for Ma Bell so she doesn't forget, 
Our January board meeting is the 8th of January because the board felt it would be a burden to expect us to get up on the morning of January 1st or New Year's after partying the night before to hold the board meeting. You can social distance with a drink in your hand. <laughs> So, any objection to adjourning the meeting? No. Meeting is so adjourned. All of you have a great holiday. Thank you.